Good evening, this is Ross Axe, I'm Zakhar Jacob. There was an all Karnataka band today called by political parties to protest the Kaveri Water Management Authority's decision to grant water to Tamil Nadu. Karnataka says it's facing a drought here and it cannot release any more water. But this is really not about water. This is about basic governance. You remember three days ago, there was this amazing picture that came of Bengaluru city coming to a standstill because there were three and a half lakh cars on the outer ring road and the government was not able to provide basic infrastructure. It's road that people were asking for, not some fancy out of this world object. Today, the whole city, the whole state, in fact, was shut down because of politi politics and because of political reasons. The state, as a result, has lost over 4,000 crores. But who is to be held accountable for this? कल से हम यहाँ से बैठे हुए अभी तक तो मिला नहीं बस कल रात को ये भी बैठे हुए थे हम इधर ही रह रहे थे तो ऐसे चल रहा था All right, now you remember a couple of nights ago, uh, the pictures that you're seeing on the far right of your screen, that was what Bengaluru city was looking like. It was a massive jam. People were taking four or five hours just to traverse less than a kilometer. This is the Outer Ring Road and it's infamous, uh, folks. This has been the case with the Outer Ring Road for the last 20 years. This is the same part of town which got badly hit in the floods last year. And now this was the situation this time. And all people were asking for is basic roads. Today, the scene was something else. The entire city, the entire state was shut down for politicians and for a political reason. I'm not going to the merits of whether Karnataka can or should release water to Tamil Nadu. What I'm curious to know about, and this is what every Bangalorean resident, every resident of Karnataka wants to know, if on the left, governments cannot provide basic facilities like roads to take care of traffic, then what right do they have? What right do the same politicians have to shut down an entire city, to shut down an entire state, howsoever justified their reason might be. All right, let me now uh, bring you up to speed with what was open today and what was not, because the Aam Admi was the one who suffered the most. Shops, malls, hotels, restaurants, theaters, all of this was unavailable. Whereas public transport was available in limited form, auto services, taxis, Ola, Ubers, etc. 44 flights, 44 flights were cancelled from the Bengaluru uh, airport. Malls, shops, restaurants, hotels, all of this was completely shut. Uh, in limited capacity, we had taxi, Ola and Uber services, as well as auto services uh, in very, very limited and sparing capacity. And of course, like I said, more than three dozen flights cancelled at the Bengaluru airport. Now, the other question, and this is again worth pondering, is what is the impact of this on Karnataka's economy? In fact, you had a senior minister, Mr. Parmeshwara, come out and say that the two-day bun has cost the state approximately 4,000 crores. A one-day closure by traders results in 100 crores loss. That's just in GST alone. Hotel Association says their estimate of loss is to the tune of 100 crore rupees in excise duty. Uh, loss in the form of taxes amounting to 400 to 500 crore rupees. In fact, many of these associations say it will take up to a month for them to recover these losses because of the bun. I want to first go across to uh, a special guest who is joining us. He's the Member of Parliament from South Bangalore. Uh, Tejasvi Surya is now joining us. Uh, thank you very much, Tejasvi Surya, for speaking with us uh, here on CNN News 18. Uh, you're also the National President of the BJP, Yuva Mocha, and MP from South Bengaluru. Uh, the state government says that uh, they are battling it out legally with the Supreme Court-appointed Kaveri Water Authority, and that while they are pleading, 
the case of Karnataka in the Supreme Court, uh, no political party would have been able to do anything different. Basically, what would you have done had you been in government and that you're playing politics with the people of Karnataka? How would you respond to that? Well, uh, without getting into the politics of it, I want to place before you Karnataka's case, which is uh, extremely distressing as regards the availability of Kaveri water today. The situation on ground is grim because the state has received about 60% deficit rainfall this year, which is the steepest decline in almost five to six decades. The uh, Kaveri Basin has about 34 taluks, out of which 32 taluks are declared severely drought hit. The city of Bengaluru and uh, many districts in Karnataka are dependent even on drinking water needs on the Kaveri. Our total water requirement to the end of the water year, that is next year July, is about 106 TMC of water. Whereas we have only about 50 TMC of water left in our reservoirs and the levels are rapidly declining. The state of Karnataka primarily receives water rainfall through the southwest monsoons which have failed and are already exhausted. There is no more possibility of additional rains. Whereas the state of Tamil Nadu receives rainfall from both southwest monsoons as well as most importantly the northeast monsoons which are yet to land uh, hopefully from the uh, end of October. This is the uh, position on ground okay. and uh, uh, whichever way you look at it, it is a perilous situation. If the state uh, complies with the orders in the way and, and CWMA keeps giving these kind of unreasonable orders, uh, the, uh, the state may even have to face uh, 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 you know, a challenge for drinking water in the coming uh, months. This is the reality. This is the grim, grim situation on the ground. Okay, the state but, but government look at the situation on the ground as you say. Uh, Mr. Parmeshra, one of the senior ministers in the government says that the loss to the state exchequer would be the, to the tune of 4,000 crores. For the city of Bengaluru itself, it's expected to be over 1,000 crores. Now, how does one justify a bund of this nature? Whatever your cause may be, however justifiable the cause may be, how can you shut down an entire state and an entire city like Bengaluru? No, I, Zaka, I agree, I agree with you that, yes, I agree with you that, uh, you know, the, the uh, approach of a band may not be the very best method to express our uh, outrage. Um, there, there are other methods to uh, express our outrage. But having said that, the, you know, the situation is desperate and desperate measures call for desperate action. And this is one such uh, situation where there is the state is constrained somehow to draw the attention of the Kaveri Water Management Authority, which is an expert body, which is constituted under the Supreme Court. Unfortunately, the last so many months, one order after another is being passed in uh, the detriment to the state's interest. These authorities are taking uh, measures, I mean orders, uh, passing orders, uh, sitting in AC rooms, video conferencing, without due regard to the ground reality. I also urge the water management authorities to send an expert body on a field visit to ascertain the situation on ground and then pass orders. Okay. So, uh, though I am not in support of the band in, in, as, a, as the best uh, uh, method to uh, uh, present our outrage, the, the state at this point in time is constrained to do this. Now, but tell me, two days ago, we had these images of people, Bengalurians, stuck on the roads, more than three lakh cars uh, just on the outer ring road. People took four or five hours just to traverse a few kilometers. And the people are saying, you know, when the state can't provide basic infrastructure, all they're asking for is decent roads, how can the same state and political parties who represent that state justify shutting down that state for a month? Well, I wouldn't want to club both of these issues, though they are linked economically. Providing drinking water for Bengaluru and all the lakhs of people that you mentioned is also of utmost priority for us. The cars can run on petrol, but the people and the one crore citizens of Bengaluru to survive need Kaveri water. And the issue today is very, very serious, Zaka. As we speak, the levels in our reservoirs are depleting. The state's monsoon has completely failed. 
our farmers are unable to get basic water to even keep the standing crops alive there is no water available to support the flora and fauna and the animals uh, the the okay. uh, domestic animals at homes and in the farms this is a situation in the state therefore this is a desperate measure like i told this is not something that you know the state right. wants to or we are enjoying doing this or there is uh, you know some kind of a consensus about this but the authorities involved must also approach this manner this issue from a very sensitive manner a sincere manner and try to chalk out a long term solution okay that we'll is something that, that uh, tejashvi surya member of parliament from south bengaluru and uh, president of the bharatiya janata party yuva mocha thank you for joining us uh, let me now open this up not just to our panelists we'll go to them in one second but i also want to bring our viewers up to speed that you can call us our numbers are flashing on the screen the band paralyzing karnataka and the city of bengaluru but why should the aam aadmi suffer 0120640375 is our number you can call in especially if you're from bengaluru and tell us how you have encountered over the last two or three days first that massive traffic jam and today the entire state being shut down Uh, Madhu and Rao is spokesperson of the BJP. Suman Singh Raman, political analyst, joining us. Rajesh Kalappa, senior advocate with the Supreme Court. Uh, he had in fact responded for the Karnataka government in the Kaveri matter. Tara Krishnaswamy is a civic rights activist. Uh, Rajesh, let me start with you first. Uh, you have wear both a lawyer's hat and also a politician's hat. Uh, but for one, let's start wearing a citizen's hat. And the citizens of Bengaluru are asking a very basic, fundamental question: State can't provide decent roads. so that people don't have to be stuck in traffic for 4 or 5 hours on a normal work day uh and then the same state and i'm not saying you know one political party is responsible or another political party is responsible across cutting across the political spectrum uh the state comes together political parties come together to shut down that same state i mean again who suffers it is the aam aadmi who suffers it's the ordinary citizen the ordinary residents of bengaluru who suffer i mean this is double standards at best Raka, well, I agree with you that uh, there is a huge problem, and uh, particularly daily wages are uh, the worst hit when uh, there is, uh, you know, this kind of a bunch situation. Not a bunch situation once in a blue moon, but repeatedly. I agree that you know the daily. It's the daily wages who are hit. It's people who uh, have to eke out their income on a daily basis and who have to earn their living for the day. They are the worst hit, and I agree with you. but uh, you must also remember that uh, the kaveri dispute is a highly ev- emotive issue as far as karnataka is concerned and not just today or yesterday this has been a uh, emotive issue uh, you know you must remember that in 1991 there were uh, large scale riots owing to the kaveri dispute and uh, so on and so forth but you know i i am very happy that you know largely law and order has been maintained and uh, of course this is a problem which we'll have to encounter but i hope that in days to come you know the intensity of uh, these kind of uh, protests will come down and uh, thanks to the fact that uh, you know uh, what has happened in 1991 has not recurred mm-hmm. and we hope that it doesn't happen again and we hope that in times to come the people are able to accept orders of uh, this either the cwma or the super supreme court with the equanimity that it deserves to be uh, no uh, on, on that one point i agree with you there was a time uh, you're right in the 1990s when uh, you know ban would have seen a lot of violence uh, touch wood and and this is i think a maturing of the polity maturing of the electorate uh, and of course far less propensity for violence now so so one good thing was we didn't see any bus burning in any you know uh, public transport being affected uh, you know being being hurled with stones and so on and that kind of thing especially you know uh, public transport of neighboring states that come in they used to be the first ones uh, that get targeted N- none of that has happened but madhu and rao i want to speak today uh, on behalf of ordinary bengalorians who are asking again a very simple question if we can flash those two visuals i think it's a very contrasting picture people were stuck on the outer ring road in places like belandur martahalli for 4 5 hours just to traverse you know a kilometer or a few kilometers again they're not asking for the heavens they're not asking for some you know uh, magic all they're asking for is basic road and and you know this this part of town is infamous last year it got flooded out this year it's got trafficked out 
And then today you have political parties coming together to shut down a state. Again, who suffers the most? The Aam Aadmi suffers the most. 4,000 crores is what the state has lost. <laughs> so when it's politically convenient, all of you all close ranks. But the job that you're elected to do, that you cannot do, as was evidenced in the massive traffic jam that we saw a couple of days ago. Zakar, good evening. I, I think I heard uh, uh, Brijesh, uh, my senior friend, and also my brother, Stages uh, uh, Surya. The point of view is this. Now, let us understand, you're talking about the four-hour, five-hour traffic jam. I truly agree with it. I know that uh, I've, been, I've been in Bangalore for, since my birth. The whole corridor itself is a tech corridor. I can understand the amount of traffic jam and the, uh, you know, the vehicle propensity, what happens there. Now, having said so, I mean, today's, let us agree, there is an official statement, perhaps it is given by the police uh, commissioner, who say that, you know, that since there is a five-day long uh, leave, the people are going, so therefore it has been uh, such a rush. I do not know. I think the police commissioner needs to add to this and also clarify about this. But having said so, yes, there has been apathy with regard to roads. Right from the time immemorial when the Congress party is there, I'm sorry to say this, I'm, I do not want to make it politicize it. Rather, I want to be very, I, I, want, I want to talk it as a citizen. But think over this. Now you're telling about the Band. Zaka, I want to ask you one thing. It's not about, as my senior friend told Mr. Bajesh Kalapa, it's an emotive issue. It is a life and death issue. We don't have water. And the government is in deep slumber. For what reason, we are not able to know. I mean, perhaps this ban would have not been called if the government would have to act properly in a sane manner before they left the water. What was the necessity for them to no, no. be quiet? M Madhu, Madhu, Ma Madhu, Madhu, once again, the Kaveri Water Management Authority is a Supreme Court appointed quasi-judicial body. It was the, by order of the CWMA that the state Zaka. government released the water. I agree, now, Zaka. What, do you, what do you want them to do? Disobey Zaka, the Supreme agree, Court? Zaka. Mm. Zaka, Zaka, I am, I, just give me one minute, Zaka. Mm. Look at the, look at the uh, c crucial thing which the government does not add. I think I would be happy if I am corrected by Mr. Brijesh Kalapa since he has handled the issue more in the court. I mean, why can't the government go before the uh, Supreme Court the 10th or 11th of August and say, my Lord, kindly, this is a distress year. All the six years we have left more than 30 to 40 percent of more excess water we have left. We don't have water for drinking. And of all the uh, Tamil Nadu is asking for about, uh, you know, uh, uh, for, for the Kuruvai crop, we don't have water. What was the necessity for the government not to put this on record? That is what we are telling. Perhaps, okay. had it been told, this one would have not called. Okay, so let me let me go across to ordinary Bangaloreans before I go to Sumant and to uh, Tara Krishnaswamy in just one second. I've got a couple of callers. Uh, Raghu is calling us from Bangalore. Uh, yes, good evening, Raghu. Go ahead. Well, uh, good, evening, yeah, good evening. Hi. Yeah. Good uh, evening. Okay. I, my point of view is, uh, you know, uh, with the question of why Ahmadi has to suffer, it's more to do with Ahmadi is the one who is going to utilize the Kaveri water over here, down the, throughout the Bangalore. Kaveri water supplies, uh, you know, water to the entire Bangalore city, uh, at least to 80 percent of the city. So we will have to, you uh, know, uh, this small suffering is uh, for a larger cause. Okay. And that should be not taken in a, a wrong way. All right. So Thank I you for your call. Be, uh, uh, Sridhar is also calling us from Bengaluru. Yes, okay. Sridhar. Yeah, yeah, Zaka. See, I'm one of the victims who was stuck in the traffic jam. Mm -hmm. And I'm, in, I'm living in Bangalore for almost 30 years. And mm -hmm. I'm one of the IT See, the traffic jam happened. There's nothing to do with the cover issue or the road. It's a long weekend. A lot of IT companies have declared holiday on Thursday. People put leave on Friday. That's the reason Wednesday it was a choke. And it happens. I don't think this is a regular scene, Zaka. Okay, Sridhar, thank you for that. Uh, Babu Narayan is calling us uh, again from Bengaluru. Babu Narayan. Uh, good evening, Zaka. Yeah, good evening. Yeah. Go ahead, sir. I can hear you. Yeah, actually, uh, this is uh, completely unprecedented because last two days uh, in this week, we had this Bangalore bank. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, this is uh, not at all acceptable for a city like Bangalore no, to go and strike for two, two days in a week. Yeah. So something has to be done for this, whether it's Kaveri or anything else. All right. Babu Narayan, thank you for your call. Uh, Mr. Shrikant is also calling us from Bengaluru. Yeah, Shrikant. Yeah. Hello, Zaka. Yeah. Go ahead. I can hear you. Go ahead. Hello. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, this this bun this has paralyzed the city. 
for two days and this is not done. And uh, the, whatever government comes, the successive government, they have not taken any action to ease the traffic first and the uh, garbage what we are uh, you know generating here yeah. that totally the civic communities are not at all looked after by any of the government who have been uh, ruling this state for almost two decades all right shrikan thank you for your call uh, let me now go to sumant and to tara sumant uh, you know what is striking is that it's not once this week it's twice this week and like i said i'm not getting into the merits or demerits of uh, the Kaveri water issue and whether Karnataka should be given an exception this year because it's a drought year likely. Uh, I am on the point of how can you shut down a state, shut down a city like Bengaluru twice in one week and I believe there are multiple uh, high court and supreme court orders talking about how Hartal is illegal. You, you, they are, you are barred by these various judgments from calling any kind of Hartal or shutdown or uh, band. And yet this That's happens. First of, all, first of all, it is tragic to see the politics that is being played out. Let us, let me make one fact very clear and I hope all the people of Karnataka are watching this particular statistic. Tamil Nadu between June and September is supposed to, as per the Supreme Court order, get a 124, approximately 124 TMC feet. This year, Tamil Nadu has received 42 TMC feet. That is approximately one third of what Tamil Nadu should get. Karnataka's reservoirs as on 29th September 2023 have got a storage of Kaveri Basin reservoirs alone have a storage of 58 TMC feet. Don't believe me? Look it up. 58 TMC feet. So all that Tamil Nadu is saying is, you have a 50% deficit, you have not given us 66%. That is the difference. You are not, the whole point is nobody, Tamil, and that is what the Kaveri Water Management Authority has said. The Kaveri Water Management Authority has said, there is distress in Karnataka. We understand that the rains are not normal. We understand that the storage of the reservoirs is 50%, but... If the distress is 50%, it should be shared in equal proportion. Tamil Nadu has received one third of what it should receive between June and September. Let's be very clear. 177 okay. TMC feet should come for the entire year, out of which the bulk of it comes each year in these three months, June, uh, in these four months, June to September. And that is because they are the peak months of the southwest monsoon when it rains in Karnataka. Okay, uh, I think both, no, uh, one, no. second, one, one second, one let, second, let, let's uh, thrash this out. Both we Brijesh and Madhu uh, are nodding very, very uh, uh, furiously. So, so uh, Brijesh first and then I'll go to Madhu after that. Yeah, Tara, just give me one second, please. Yeah, yeah so Janka, it's like this, that Tamil Nadu, uh, as you know, receives some portion of the rain from the southwest monsoon. Mm -hmm. But 237 TMC from the northeast monsoon. And that 237 TMC is an assured amount, right? Which which will flow under any circumstances. Because there could be some variation in terms it's of the southwest. But from in so far as the east is concerned. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't want no, to no, get into this. Where did you get this data from? I'm, where one, did you one, get one this minute, Suman, from? Mr. Sumat Raman. I, I didn't want... I, see, I didn't make a single comment. Regarding the merits of the matter, you're the one who spoke about the merits of the matter. Unfortunately yeah. for you... I've represented the state before the, the both the tribunal and the Supreme Court. That so the, fine, these sir. are some inescapable facts, some facts which nobody can deny. And these are the facts I'm placing before you. So okay. this is the first part. That Second that? part is that okay. even after the this decline of the southwest monsoon, Karnataka has nowhere to go. And there are no more flows which come in. This is the situation, right? This being the situation, I think if, if one wants to make a very, uh, you know, uh, argument on merits, I think it's avoidable. The debate is largely regarding how Bangalore is affected, how there should not be a ban. No, no, let us retain that. You okay. Know, the, the uh, let me, let me, let me, let me, one 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 second, yeah, quickly, quickly, 10 seconds, uh, Sumat, I need Zaka, to bring Tara Krishnaswamy also in. She's been waiting very patiently. Yeah, please. Please. Over Zaka, let me, let, please. let me come in for a minute. Yeah, yeah, coming back to you, brother, one second. Tamil Nadu share which Karnataka should give has gone down from 200 plus 
to 192 to 177 now to say that you will get rain at some other time and i don't know this northeast monsoon that brijesh is promising it is known over the last few years to have been consistently below par so to say that you you can get rain at some other time so therefore we don't have to give you water okay look, anyway i i, I look I, I, this, this debate is not so much this debate is not so much on the merits or demerits of uh, the kaveri waters and whether it's a drought year and whether karnataka is justified in no, not no, releasing uh, uh, the uh, the asked for amount of water that, that's not that's not this that's not tonight's topic today. let me ask tara krishna swami this the, the tara tara, tara one second so much one second please please yield please yield those that are please yield please please yield please yield so much come on yeah come on one second Let's have Tara on screen. Tara, the point is that, like I said, I'm not getting into the merits or demerits of Kaveri water. Who gets what share? Point is that the residents of a city, one of the highest contributing cities when it comes to direct and indirect taxes in this country, are facing the worst of both worlds. On the one side, I show, showed you those images from Wednesday night, where the entire city came to a standstill because. you know the road simply couldn't take on the load of 3 lakh plus cars and again today the city has come to a standstill second time in a week because politicians have all ganged up for whatever cause right at the end of the day both on wednesday and today who is suffering the most it's the tax paying citizen of the city and and, and why should they bear the brunt from both of these sides zaka the yeah uh, it's really uh, unfortunate what happened with the traffic jam and uh, there were even children stuck uh, not being able to get back home for hours and that must have been terrible on the children and the parents um, that said i think there are a few things that we must state to make this very clear that particular road the outer ring road the stretch in which all this happened is exactly where the metro construction is happening so uh, even on a normal day with a regular amount of traffic it is much slower than it could be uh, much slower than it ought to be uh, and that is because of construction that's number 1 number 2 if you take when we talk about road infrastructure in bangalore uh, we need a lot more of it there is no two ways about that that said uh, even if you take the extraordinary road infrastructure in places like the us um especially the 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 west coast and uh, los angeles the highway 101 barely gets a lakh in 25000 cars okay we are talking about 3 and a half lakh cars here almost triple or two and a half times that no road can take that no matter how wide you build the road it's not going to be able to take this kind of a traffic so the two things to remember are this if we want to build a 15 km stretch where 6 to 7 lakh people are working and all of them have cars and all of them decide to bring cars on a given day right it's untenable right so this is not a matter of a political pa- specific political party or road infrastructure there is no infrastructure in the world you can build if you want within a 15 km uh, stretch 6 lakh 6 and a half 7 lakh people to work and that's just a count on a given day as more companies come in bangalore being one of the fastest growing cities are the fastest growing city the most dynamic city as more people come in more cars come in this is going to continue to be a problem no, especially no, no, no. I, I, i think no tara uh, uh, may i beg to no, differ no, please second, no no may 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 i, I, may I, may I, I beg I to differ Be- because the man have had be- two or three turns to speak i y- want yeah to yeah speak. sure sure okay, go, go ahead as an activist who's argued okay so number 1 I think public transport should be prioritized over private transport and there is no other way to uh, run large cities. We must first do the suburban train, the metro and the buses and get people on to mass transit and that is the way to avoid these kind of extreme situations. That's number 1. Number 2 there is some hope, okay? This year the two metro lines are opening. Some of the most crowded places in Bangalore due to the I mean connected to this very road, Whitefield, KR Puram and electronic city metro lines are opening this year for those so that is one piece of good news second no, what, 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 is for what, the first time you, you know you know i i i generally don't i generally don't tend to disagree with with panelists but uh, i you know i think tara is let, letting successive governments get away very lightly and I, and i tell you why I, i'll tell you why because who allowed these 6 or 7 lakh people to work from one stretch of road 
Uh, they had to have building clearances. They had to have all kinds of permits from different departments, from different ministries, all of which was given by successive governments, right, over the last 20 years. Isn't that no, the no, 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 what I'm, what I'm asking this, is, what I'm asking is, no, no, what I'm asking is, if you want to force people to take public transport, then en enforce that, right? I don't believe, I don't believe in enforcing anything. I don't believe that, you know, especially decisions like asking public to take, uh, uh, people to take public transport after having invited investors and companies and multinationals uh, to no, come no, there I and invest and then say, oh, by the way, you have to take public transport, exist. which, which, by the way, is no, non-existent. No, 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 which yes. doesn't exist. What exactly. Is now, who, is who, who is responsible for the metro not Sakha. getting constructed for the last 10 years in Bengaluru? Are That's the citizens exactly responsible? Are those IT companies responsible? Are those six to seven lakh people who are working on that outer ring road stretch? Are they responsible? Come on, let's let's you know if accountability needs to be fixed, it has to be fixed. And like I said, I'm not wanting to blame one political party or one government. Successively, for the last 20 years, they have let down the people. But to say that those companies or those employees are responsible or this is how it is. No government, no country can can do it. I, I'm sorry. I think that's uh, that, that that's just let, letting people get away lightly. People who should be held to account. But let, let's ask the people of Bengaluru. We've got four callers. I want to go to them. Venkatesh is calling us. Venkatesh, yes. Good evening. Uh, go ahead, sir. I'm, I'm sure you heard the conversation, the, the the debate amongst our panelists. Go ahead. What are your views, Venkatesh? Yeah. Hi. Good evening, Saga. Um, I think your panelists are talking, mixing up too many multiple things over here. Um, see, today's debate, I think, should be purely about the merits of the bund. Is the bund a, a, a good way to pro register your protest against the government? I think the answer is no. It's throwing normal life out of gear. Yes. It's inconveniencing the public. What's the point of blocking roads, blocking roads, blocking airports? If you must protest, protest outside, uh, you know, chief minister's residence or Vidhan Sada. What are you trying to prove by inconveniencing the public? Uh, yeah. That's my major cause against. All right. Thank you very much, Venkatesh. And I agree with you 100%. Rajiv is also calling us. Yes, Rajiv, go ahead. Hi. Good evening, Zaka. I good think uh, we are discussing two completely different issues. While the traffic mess on Wednesday is the result of complete lack of governance on part of successive governments, the Bund is a very valid form of protest by the people of Bengaluru and Kannadigas in general against the totally ins unscientific uh, award given by the Kaveri Tribunal, which does not take into account the distress years and what needs to be done by the distress years. While there is inconvenience, I think the Bund is a very valid form of protest and it is a people's Bund. It's not the bond called by any political party. So, in that uh, respect, I fully support the party. All right. Uh, thank you for your call. Uh, Lakshman is also calling us. Yes, Lakshman, go ahead. Uh, good evening, Zakha. Good evening. My point of view is very simple. The state has lacked completely in planning their roads, their development projects. How can you give licenses to 7 lakh people to work in a small zone, yep. which is going to cause this traffic mess? It is total state responsibility for not planning properly and is assigning different zones to different companies to work from. Okay, number one. Number two, as far as the bond is concerned, again, my issue is the chief minister of the state should have, who has known that there is a bond coming up, should have come forward and talk to the people of the state saying that please don't participate in the bond. We are trying to do A, B, C, D for you, which he did not do. At least that could have possibly help some people to change their mind. All right. The state's working yeah. on. Thank you, Lakshman, for your call. Uh, Ganesh is also calling us from Bengaluru. Uh, yes, Ganesh, go ahead. Good evening, Zaka. Good evening. Uh, we should just concentrate on the bun. Bringing in the Bangalore traffic is different. See, bank, people come to Bangalore to enjoy so many things. Traffic is one of the issue, and this type of five-hour jam does not happen every day. It just so happened on Wednesday due to a lot of issues. Like people were forced to come to work that day and if there was a long five-day holiday, people went away. This does not... I'm not trying to say bun is good or bad, okay? Bun had to happen because drinking water is utmost important for Bangaloreans, more than the traffic jam. You okay. say Delhi, we, we being in Bangalore, drinking water is a must, I think so. 
All thank right, Ganesh, thank you for your call. Uh, let me go back to our, uh, our, our panelists. Yes, Madhu wanted to, to respond. Now, again, Madhu, let's stick to, you know, the, the mess that was caused and let's stick to the bund and whether the bund was the best means to make your point. I don't want to get into the merits or demerits of the Kaveri matter. That's, that's, a, that's a separate debate. Well, b by your point, you have insulated uh, Mr. Suman C. Raman. Fair enough. Uh, no, I, I listened to that. Why? I, my only point is this. See, look at the apathy by the government. Let me ask one question to this government. Fair enough, we have lost our elections and the Congress government is there. What did Mr. D.K. Shukumar, the Deputy Chief Minister of Karnataka, tell? He told that I will wake brand Bengaluru. But unfortunately, people from Hero, you know, his own party and MLS have been telling there is no money. Please give us money. And they have diverted the money for the guarantee schemes. And now of all, they want to open 359 outlets of bar, so to say, to make to make uh, Bangalore a brandy city or a bar city. I mean, look at the opportunity, look at the priorities of this government. What else can you ask for, Zaka? I mean, look at the DCM, look at the chief minister, look at those ministers and all the MLS. They have been vehemently telling we do not have money for development. What can you expect from this slumbered sleep, you know, having, you know, not even okay. listening to the people of Karnataka. Therefore, the so, one was called. So, Sumant Raman, uh, one, uh, again, one, to, one, to one the point, thing. to the point no, that, I'm no, no, one, one second, Sumant, Sumant, hear me out. To the yeah. point that Rajesh made, and I think it's a fair one, that yes, this is an emote, not just an emotive issue, it's a life and death issue. If there's no drinking water, then what, what are people expected yeah. to do? So, if that means that they need to convey the sentiment of the state, then they do do it in the most uh, attention catching manner and what what okay, can, what, what, what more attention if, catching if you manner than calling a bun no exactly if you can give me a courtesy of 30 seconds yes. what is it suman suman please suman yeah one second uh, zaka there are two things had the karnataka government explained the position to the to their own citizens better there may not have even been a necessity for a bun if they had said look i'm sorry Nadu is demanding one second sir please don't interrupt no, no, you do not know statistics. Please do not talk about what? statistics. No, no, Madhu, please, come on. Uh, this, no, 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 no. We were having a civilized conversation. No fighting, please. Yeah, yeah. Suman, finish One second, point. Laka. If they had gone and told their citizens, look, Tamil Nadu has moved the court asking for 24,000 cusacks of water. The Kaveri Management Authority has only told us to give 5,000 cusacks. We are releasing only 3,000 cusacks. That itself would have cooled temperatures down on that side. Instead of that, to say that the, we have no water when 58 TMC feet of water stands in their reservoirs today. What I am trying to tell you is, had the communication been proper by the Karnataka government, mm. there may not have been the necessity for a bunk. What has been ordered no, by no, the Kaveri I, Water Management think, Authority is a fraction no, no, I, I, of see, what look, was look, demanded. What, there, there are issues. There are even, the Kaveri is also an emotive issue in Tamil Nadu. And it is one of the few issues, and, and Brijesh can also weigh in on this, one of the few issues where... All political parties are wanting to be seen on the right side of this divide. They all come, they all fight 364 days in a year, but on one day when there is a, a Kaveri issue, everyone wants to be seen on the right side. So, did the state government have that choice or as Madhu and Sumanta are saying, they did a ham-handed job, they didn't argue well before the Kaveri Water Management Authority, they didn't argue or present their case are, well before the, the well. Supreme Court. They argued and extremely therefore, well. And therefore, this is, this is, this is, is where, they this is where they find themselves. In. Bridges. Quantity. Yeah, yeah, Bridges, Bridges. See, Zaka, there are three things I'd like to say. One is that as far as just now Suman conceded that the water share of Karnataka has consistently gone up at every round. So it's the, either the tribunal or the Supreme Court is which, which has granted us that. So obviously, when we first had to release, we had to release 205 TMC. Then in 2007, we started to release 192 TMC on orders of the, of the uh, tribunal. Then in uh, the, after the Supreme Court decision in 2018, the uh, that, that release amount has come down to 177.25. So constantly, Karnataka has bettered its case because ultimately one authority or another has realized that Karnataka has got a raw deal. One. Two is in regard to the fact that this huge amount of, in fact, the Supreme Court concedes this point that there is a huge amount of groundwater which exists in Tamil Nadu, which is untapped, right? And that has not been touched so far. And this, everybody knows. In fact, there has been a famous booklet which we relied on, which in which there was an extreme drought here 
During that time, over 170 TMC of water was drawn from the ground. Because you see, as you know, in a river water dispute, water has been flowing there for centuries. Therefore, the, the entire okay. basin of the, in the, the Tamil Nadu water was factored in. Extraordinary amount of groundwater. Sorry? So groundwater was factored in when, when, when this 177 was ordered. Okay. The groundwater was factored in. Tara, Tara, I'm coming, coming back to right? Tara Krishnaswamy. You know, again, I don't want to get diverted by the merits or demerits of the Kaveri matter because that is in front of the Supreme Court, it's in front of the Kaveri Water Management Authority. I do want to focus on the merits or demerits of successive governments that have let down citizens of Bengaluru, whether it is on traffic matters or even for that fact, you know, to, on the on the Kaveri water issue, had successive governments presented a better case, maybe they would have got a more favorable ruling. Zaka, every single caller, uh, which is random, right? Whoever reaches your line, every single person has supported the bunt. So, no, that's not true. Said, no, 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 that's not a, true. That's not true. Everyone has <laughs> there, said there were quite a few who said, no, the bunt, we don't accept okay, the bunt. Then anyway, I that's heard fine. differently than you did. I, surely I we, heard the surely you did. Yeah. The yeah, so to me, what it means is that this is a very emotive issue. And like you said, people, everybody wants to err on the side of their own state, which is not unusual. And that's a good thing. Now, as far as what we can change, which is the traffic of Bengaluru, successive governments have surely let us down. There's no two ways about it. What I was trying to say earlier when I was cut off is that if we first prioritize roads and cars over public transport, this is what we will get. No matter what, how many roads you build, number of cars will always overtake that in a city like Bangalore, where we already have more cars than we have people. Instead, we should look forward to the fact that for the first time in Bangalore, we are having the metro that is going to be deployed. It doesn't exist. There's no question of forcing people to get on something that doesn't exist. There is a metro that there are metros that are lines that are going to be deployed in the most congested places where most commuters go. Lacks and lacks of commuters go to Electronic City, lacks and lacks go to Whitefield, and lacks and lacks go to KR Puram. Those are the areas where the metro is going to be deployed this year. That's good news. For the first time in about 10 years, we are having over a thousand public buses added. That is again good news. So, and last mile connectivity is being looked at. So, what we need to focus on is to put pressure, continue to put pressure on the government to make sure that all this happens and okay. that there is some degree of a model shift. I don't see us building enough roads. Today, if there are six lakh cars on the road, three and a half lakh cars on the road, today, if seven lakh people work there, Tomorrow it's going to become 10 lakhs. No, I, and there is no uh, while in principle, while in principle, I, I agree with what Tara is saying, but I, I don't see, uh, I mean, you know, people who have cars uh, and most of them who are working in this corridor are well to do and have cars. I don't see them giving up their cars after having tasted that, uh, the convenience of driving cars. Uh, unless there Perhaps is some dramatic we'll speed up, shift cut, unless there's some dramatic, if you can do that whole stretch in like, you know, 20 minutes or something or 15 minutes in a metro, That's exactly I don't see, metro I don't do. see uh, how they give up on cars, but we'll leave it That's at that. Exactly uh, what the metro let's see, do, let's see how this story plays out. Like, like I said, it's an absolute travesty that people should be stuck in traffic without basic infrastructure. And those very same people are also at the receiving end of a statewide bund when it's convenient for the politicians there. But uh, let me now move on to...